We Couldn't 2 was released on December 17, 1998 in Japan, August 31, 1999 in North America and July 28, 2000 in Europe. Today it is one of the most memorable RPGs on the PlayStation, considered by many as the best in the series. So let's take a look into 10 things you may not know about this masterpiece. Number 10. The Elusive Demo Only in Japan and Europe was a demo released. In Japan it came with Metal Gear Solid. In Europe it came with Vandal Hearts 2. It's basically the beginning of the game up until you fight the Mist Monster with the traveling siblings. However, there's a second part called Trial Road, also known as Battle Mode. It's all messed up, poorly translated, letting you play with many different characters in a certain area of the game. This demo is elusive because it was never released in North America. It's rare, but only because there's barely any people selling it. Unless you buy, of course, a complete inbox version of the Japanese Metal Gear Solid release or a PAL version of Vandal Hearts 2. Number 9. Spin-offs Two spin-offs came into the form of visual novels or text adventures for Suikoden 2 on the PlayStation. They were called Suiko Gaiden 1 and 2. They focus on the adventures of Nash, a young agent from the Holy Harmonia Empire, with a secret mission concerning one of the 27 true runes. Several characters from Suikoden 2 make cameos, specifically Sierra Mikine, who becomes one of the main protagonists in these two games. The story takes place during the events of Suikoden 2. They were never released outside Japan, but both have been fan-translated since many years ago. It's interesting to know that these two spin-offs partly led to the creation of Suikoden 3, as Nash is an important and playable character there. Number 8. Drama, CD and Manga Mangas, of course, they're almost always there for most JRPGs released in Japan, so it's no surprise that there was a Suikoden 2 manga based on the game's events. It got also a novelization. Actually, the name Ryu was created by the author of the novel, so the main character could have one. Fun trivia, huh? Anyway, there was also a drama CD. What the hell is a drama CD? Well, they are mostly just audio with music and voiceover. That's right, there was Japanese voice acting in both discs released on this drama CD format. Basically, the actors retell bits of some of the most important parts in Suikoden 2. You can find them all in YouTube if you want to watch them, but they're obviously in Japanese. There's also fan translated versions of them, so if you care to read them online, be my guest. Number 7. Explanation behind the translation issues Everybody who has played the game knows that the translation is somewhat mediocre. Sometimes characters don't make any sense when talking, and the way they do is more than weird in a very obnoxious context. I searched through the almighty internet to find out why the translation was the way it was, and all I could find was an explanation out of nowhere from allegedly the guy who translated the game. Nick Desbarres, aka Nick Rocks, is his name, and I'll leave the links in the description to his Twitter and the website where I found the info. He explains and blames Konami for delivering he and his co workers, Casey Lowe and Jeremy Blaustein, a terrible coded version of the script. To quote him, we were delivered the script among code, with no indication as to who was speaking. Text was bunched together based on location. He also claims the world Yoshi Murayama, the creator of the series, had developed was very complex. So without Murayama's personal cyclopedia of Suikoden 2 that they got alongside the script, the localization would have been much worse. So why did Konami send them a messy script? It's like they didn't even bother. Why? Well, we'll get to that later. But the point is, this just proves Konami was a horrible company since many years before it created its own infamy worldwide. Number 8. 
Number 6. Commercial Failure You may find it hard to believe that when Suikoden 2 was released outside Japan, it was a total commercial failure. Part of the blame is the aforementioned statement about the poor translation. Initially, critics praised the game, but everybody complained about the bizarre English script within it. Also, it wasn't in 3D, like many other games in the system, receiving some negative arguments about it. Nevertheless, those weren't the only reasons why Suikoden 2 failed in both Europe and North America. Konami, as I stated before, didn't even bother. Their efforts of marketing and localization were on other major games and franchises. They always believed Suikoden was going to be too complicated for Western gamers, so after Suikoden 1, which wasn't exactly successful either outside Japan, they kinda just threw Suikoden 2 at us to see if they could make any money out of it. Truth of the matter is, the game was barely advertised. To make it worse, it received a limited print run, so not too many copies were actually circulated in the world when it was originally released. All this led to the game becoming a commercial disappointment. Number 5. Late Critical Success So Suikoden 2 became the perfect definition of a hidden gem back then. Almost nobody knew it, almost no one had played it, barely any physical copies around, but the very few gamers that did play it immediately started praising it. Thanks to the aforementioned issues though, it took a while for the game to gain its cult following fan base that too grew as gigantic as it is today. The internet came to everyone in the world and eventually forum critics, influencers and YouTubers started praising the game in every form they could. Granted, we all agree the translation wasn't that good, but everything else was perfect. Suikoden 2 is proof on how a game can totally fail at its release and then, several years later, become one of the most beloved titles in a system. Number 4. Reason behind its current price I already said that when this game was released outside Japan, Konami printed very few copies in both Europe and North America. In these two regions, a physical incomplete in-box copy of the game nowadays can be found for a range between 150 and 200 US dollars. Obviously, over a decade ago, this game was still rare, but nowhere near as expensive as it is today. The late critical success made it so popular that collectors wanted to own it as it was the only way to play it. Nowadays, it's being re-released digitally, but the PlayStation release remains as the only physical format outside Japan. Suikoden 2 is one of the most sought-after RPGs ever made, and with barely any people trading in the game or reselling it, it's no wonder why it continues to go up in price every year. Number 3. The Nanami Controversy Nanami is one of the main characters in Suikoden 2. She is the adopted big sister of Ryu, the protagonist, a very energetic and charismatic character. It's also known that in every Suikoden game there are 108 characters to recruit, something you need to do if you want to get the true ending on it. Now, the next section contains spoilers, but trust me, you need to know, or else you'll deeply regret it later, like many gamers did. The controversy is as follows. Nanami dies at a certain point of the game, but the only way to save her is to have every character available recruited at that point, and also, Choose the right dialogue option at this point of the game. You need to quickly select the second option because there is a 2 or 3 seconds invisible time limit to do so. What's controversial is the fact that both options seem to be the same. So why would you have to choose the second one? And why create this very cryptic solution in the first place? I'm not sure if it was yet another translation issue, but this was completely annoying and nobody knew it until they realized Nanami was dead by the end of the game. Number 2. Rumors Debunked For many, many years, it was believed that Yoshitaka Murayama had first written the script of Suikoden 2 even before the first one was even an idea. Allegedly, and it's even written on Wikipedia still, Murayama felt he lacked the experience to properly develop Suikoden 2, so he created instead a new script for the first Suikoden. Recently though, a YouTube channel called Resonant Arc made a Suikoden 2 retrospective video where they revealed this wasn't true. 
owner of the channel managed to contact Murayama through an email, where he clearly replied that Suikoden 2 didn't exist before the first Suikoden. This rumor, or rather alleged fact, was debunked. Either way, as much as I respect Yoshitaka Murayama, there's no way to know for certain if he's telling the truth or not. But if that's what he told Resonant Arg in a real email, how are we supposed to prove otherwise? Number 1. The true story behind its development In the email, Murayama explained that the original idea was to create a game for a mobile device. This was later scrapped back in 1993 and the entire project was abandoned. Murayama and Junko Kawano, the lead designer and artist of the game, were then asked to create an RPG for the PlayStation. So they took back the script Murayama had already written and the rest is history. Suikoden was very successful in Japan, so plans for a sequel were immediately put into action right after its release. Konami took previous criticism into account and so did Murayama and Kawano, so they added Fumi Ishikawa to help in the design of the game, leaving them both enough time to work on the script of the game. So far so good, but the truth is, it was hell. Konami limited Murayama and team to a short period of time, rushing not only its development, but also its localization as we previously learned. The team worked on the game in such a fast and exaggerated manner, under a lot of pressure, that Murayama eventually got burned out. Thankfully, Suikoden 2 was masterfully done, but the same couldn't be said about its localization. Upon working on Suikoden 3 for the PS2, under the same conditions, Murayama realized he should have quit Konami a long time ago. However, he was under a strict 10-year contract with them, so he couldn't do anything. This contract began in 1993, so in 2003, he finally quit the company a month before Suikoden 3 was released in Japan. In my opinion, he couldn't have made a better decision. Okay guys, that was my take on Suikoden 2, one of the absolute best RPGs of all time, a personal favorite too many and a cult classic that flourished after so many years. If you know more facts about it, feel free to post them in the comment section. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!